I never thought about the universe It made me feel small Never thought about the problems of this planet at all Global woman, radioactive sites Imperialistic wrongs and animal rights No! Hello, this is Bill Quinn. Uh, it is April 21st, 2015. This is episode 2 of the Bill Quinn Podcast. Um, the whole podcast is about nonprofit events and organizations that are working in New York City. Today, um, I'm going to be playing an interview that I had with uh, the passionate and remarkable Angela Turagoza from the Sex Worker Project. We had a long conversation about many of the issues that sex workers face and how the uh, Sex Worker Project is helping um, this very marginalized group. We also discussed their upcoming networking and fundraising event on June 11th, opportunities to get involved with the work, and some suggestions that Angela has for other nonprofits. And with that, uh, here is my interview with Angela. So I'm here with Angela Terragoza from the Sex Worker Project. How are you? Good. How are you? Thanks for having me. No, thank you for thank you for uh, coming on. So uh, let's get right into it. So, can you tell me a little bit about your organization and how you got involved? How you got involved with the the Sex Worker Project and and what they do? What kind of work do they do? Right. So, um, so basically, I'm a volunteer at the Sex Workers Project, which is a nonprofit organization that provides legal and social services for former, current, and current sex workers, as well as victims of trafficking. Um, so basically, I got involved in the Sex Workers Project um, actually before law school, um, during college. Um, in order to survive, I worked as a dominatrix, and um, I approached the Sex Workers Project to assist me in my legal case. And um, they were very client sensitive, and I really felt like you know they were so non judgmental, and they really helped me tremendously. And so after the dust settled and um, and my case was resolved, um, you know, um, I thought that, you know, it made me really think about what I wanted to do in my life. And um, I decided that I wanted to be an advocate for others with similar experiences. And so I went to law school um, to become an attorney. And um, during my in- during law school, I interned at the Sex Workers Project. And um, it gave me like an inside view of to how the nonprofit organization worked. So I'm just really um, honored to be a part of um, such an amazing organization. So it it sounds like the Sex Worker Project um, does both advocacy uh, work and also does um, does work helping people who are uh, in the sex worker industry. Um, so is it is it doing two things at the same time, or is it doing more things? So I so basically the organization believes in a very holistic approach to um, helping their clients. So you know a lot of um, a lot of the clients um, actually um, have uh, need um, both legal and social services. Um, you know. For example, uh, they need help with their current criminal case. Also, the Sex Workers Project helps them, uh, helps uh, trafficking victims vacate um, their prostitution convictions um, as a result of trafficking. So, you know, in order for them to, you know, uh, it's really helping them to move on with their lives if they do decide to leave um, sex work. Um, But... What's really unique about Sex Workers Project is that they um, assist any individual who comes to um, who comes to the organization asking for help, whether they do so by choice, circumstance, or coercion. So um, you know, there's no uh, basically, you know, this is an organization that doesn't pressure them into you know giving up the life. Um, you know, if they're not ready, because, you know, we recognize that, you know, not everyone um, is able to do that um, right away when they're not ready. 
when they have no social services. Um, that's why the um, Sex Workers Project also help clients with social services, counseling, and really just connecting them to organizations or services that will help them um, survive while, um, while they're working or when they choose to leave uh, the industry. And you're you're clearly an example of of, of, of success that the that the organization does a lot of uh, great work and so maybe you could tell me a little bit more about some of the successes that the organization has had and some of the things that that uh, some of the difference that the organization has been able to make. Right. So yeah, I mean, um, uh, I guess like you know, as a former client. Um, uh, you know, I was really, um, they really helped me, like, understand, um, you know, the context of, you know, um, the, my legal issue. And also, they were very supportive, um, you know, during um, during the, um, I guess, the legal case and after. And, you know, they allowed me to to work um, and help other um, other individuals um, that um, that the organization serves. Um, but apart from that, you know, apart from really connecting um, former clients with, um, I guess, with with access to services or access to help that they need, um, the Sex Workers Project also, as I mentioned before, help um, clients with uh, prostitution convictions to vacate them if they're a result of trafficking. Uh, in addition to that, um, the Sex Workers Project also um, does policy advocacy. Um, we were able to, um, you know, with the help of a huge coalition of other organizations, um, the Sex Workers Project was um, able to um, um, push for a bill to get passed. Um, it's the no condoms as evidence bill. So before before the bill, um, prosecutors were allowed to use um, condoms as evidence of prostitution. When we uh, when I was first uh, heard about your organization and, and um, we were getting in contact to have this interview, um, you know, I can admit that the, my first inclination was kind of. Ooh, I don't know. If I, you know, I f support everything that your organization does, but is yeah. that what I, I don't know. You know, I, and I realized after, you know, a moment like that's crazy. Why, you know, this is a super important thing. And, um, you know, so on top of every other, uh, pr uh difficulty that nonprofits work with, with low money and, and, uh, outreach and all these other problems, you know, we had talked a little bit about, on top of all those things that make an organization kind of struggle, you have this stigma uh, kind of attached not only to the, to the um, people that you're trying to help, but also just your nonprofit in general is kind of has a stigma that might come with it that also makes it difficult to get people involved or to donate. So um, yeah. maybe talk a little bit about that. Right. Um, so, you know, until, um, until fairly recent, actually, they, like um, organizations such as Sex Workers Project um, were not eligible for like uh, government funding um, because of the anti-prostitution pledge that these organizations um, were, I guess, you know, were forced to to sign. Basically, these uh, you know funding organizations, um, you know, uh, are prohibited from putting money into um, into organizations that help sex workers. However, um, that's recently changed. And now um, I think with, uh, I guess, the awareness about sex trafficking and really just how, um, how important that issue is to, um, it, has, it has helped um, organizations such as sex workers, project, sex workers Project to get the funding that they needed because, um, you know, it's, as you said, um, you know, a lot of organizations that help marginalized individuals, like they have, such as sex workers, they have this added stigma. They're helping sex workers who in our society are, you know, one of the most marginalized segments in our society. And they really, you know, at that point, they really like lack funding already. No one really wants to, you know, give money to them. And then the government even doesn't, 
provide money. So, you know, it's like, um, like, you know, like you said, like, it's like an added hurdle to all the challenges, the many challenges of managing a nonprofit or have sustaining a nonprofit. So there's this, you know, and there's this cycle, obviously, these we're talking about people who particularly uh, traffic people who are trafficking and, and people who are sex workers are are obviously on some level struggling. And this is an organization trying to help people to, to stop that struggle. And so therefore, which yeah, seems like it's not everybody wants to help should should want to help that. Yeah, for example, but, like, even like, I have a recent case right now. Um, this is, uh, you know, because I'm, I'm a criminal defense attorney, uh, and immigration attorney, um, you know, by day, and I do all this nonprofit work um, in my free time. Um, but I actually um, were assisting this um, this client who really, who had one prostitution arrest and she had to, uh, she had to resort to sex work because she was like, um, you know, she was supporting four children in Mexico, um, who she's had, you know, she's had with a very abusive husband. She was a victim of abuse, um, growing up and basically like she had you know, she didn't really have skills, you know, that, you know, she didn't go to school and, you know, with, you know, growing up from an abusive environment, you know, women, I mean, um, men really just um, preyed upon her. And so she thought like, you know, what, what do I have? You know, what can I do? And so from, for her, like, you know, that was something that, you know, I guess was attractive to people, and that she thinks is something that, you know, she can make money from. And, and really, like, she had, she really had no resources, and she was undocumented. And so it's really a struggle, you know, I mean, all of us struggle on a daily basis. Um, But I think for this, you know, marginalized population, it's, the struggle is like super real, you know, it's like, it's really like, where, where am I going to get, you know, my next meal? Or where are my children going to get their next meal if I don't make any money to send them? So, you know, it's really a survival. Um, it's a survival issue, you know. So um, you have a fundraising event coming up on June 11th. Yes. Uh, so uh, what is it? And um um, how can people, uh, ju- yeah, tell me a little bit about it. Where is it going to be? Um, and just give us some of the details about what you're doing. Yay. So, so basically people can, um, people can go on the sex workers project website, which is sexworkersproject.org, And, um, you know, they can donate, um, on that page. They can also find, um, the link to the, to the event, which is called Empower 2015. And this will be on June 11th at uh, Taj 2 in um, in Meatpacking, Taj, Taj Lounge on 48 West 21st Street. Um, so we have early bird uh, tickets uh, until April 21st, 23rd. So if you're sure that you're going to come, uh, buy it right away. Um, so basically this... Um, this uh, fundraising event is really to celebrate the work that we do and also to celebrate the clients that we've helped and uh, to support the, and to really uh, also to, I guess, to celebrate um, the people who have joined the coalition, really to celebrate the successes that, you know, that we've all had. Um, and, um, and yeah, so it's a, uh, it's a two hour open bar and um, and they have uh, hors d'oeuvres as well. So it should be fun. Great. And, and um, uh, this is not the first time that you've done this a couple of times or is this the first time you were? Yeah, this is the second. This is okay. the second year that we're doing it. Um, last year was like a packed house. It sold out way, way before um, the right. which is like which is really exciting um i feel like you know that's just really proof that you know people want to support um this type of uh project you know people want to support this cause and that it gives us hope that you know people um people are really more open-minded and more i guess 
uh, progressive thinking when it comes to uh, helping others. Speaking of helping others, you mentioned earlier that you also might be, I mean, you were open to the idea of people volunteering for for the yeah, Sex Worker right. Project. Yeah, if someone yeah. wanted to, if someone's listening and they want to volunteer, what kind of opportunities do you have and what do they do to, to get involved? I mean, as you know, nonprofit organizations um, always need volunteers to be sustainable. Uh, so, um, they can just, uh, you know, they uh, they like they want interns, um, legal interns, to help out with immigration work, with post conviction work, social workers, um, and so uh, yeah, just hit us up, uh, email or call, and um, and hopefully we'll uh, we'll get to meet them and um, you know get them to start um, helping us. Excellent. So I'm going to end uh, with one last question, which is um, from everything that you've done all the years that you've been working with the nonprofits, what is something that you can kind of pass on to to other people who are in the nonprofit industry or looking to get into the nonprofit industry? What's something that you could share that um, uh, from from all of your experience that that other people from other nonprofits? Um, I think, like, you know, it would be, like, really two things. Um, one would be to, you know, the, just the importance of um, building a coalition and really, like, engaging people that, for example, even people or organizations that you don't necessarily think would, um, you know, would support your cause. But really, like, I guess, like, showing people the big picture as to why they should support your cause. For example, with the No Condoms is Evidence um, bill, um, you know, we we engaged um, health organizations because, really, this is a public health issue. And uh, we engaged other advocates. And so I think, you know, that's very important when, um, you know, for example, when you're um, – I guess advocating for certain policies is to really um, paint a you know a big the big picture and get uh, you know a lot of people involved in your cause. And the second, um, I guess, the second note would be um, to I guess like to use the media, social media in particular, to really. Um, publicize the cause to publicize the work that the nonprofit organization does because like nonprofit organizations do such um, tremendous work and um, and really just um, I guess spreading the word um, through social media engaging the youth um, and also like you know that's why I was like so um, I was so pleased that to be involved in your uh, podcast because this is such an amazing way to really connect people and nonprofits um, and in you know build coalition um, to to help with and engage like you know a bigger a broader audience into you know engaging them in what you want to achieve yeah that's the idea <laughs> um, and uh, quickly, before you go, tell me about your own personal website. So, yeah. So, um, so if you guys want to check some, um, you know, art with uh, some art with a social justice twist, uh, you can look me up, venusinorbit.nyc. Very good. All right. Great. And all that stuff will be on, the, uh, on my blog as well. So if you got to the podcast another way, you can go to my blog. Uh, the Bill Quinn Podcast at Blogspot, and you can find links to everything that we mentioned here today. All right, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that's it. So um, usually I'm going to try to keep this podcast a little bit shorter, but we had so much to talk about that it was really hard to to keep it um, uh, any shorter than it was right there. Um, so thank you for listening. Uh, I'd like to thank, of course, Angela Torregoza and the Sex Worker Project for um, giving me a chance to speak to them. I'd also like to thank Jacqueline Reyes, who actually connected Angela and I together um, for this podcast. So thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, and if you are a nonprofit organization in New York City and you have an event coming up or you would just like to be featured, please get in contact with me. Um, my uh, website is... The Bill Quinn Podcast. Blogspot. Com, 
Um, you can also follow us at Twitter to get updates on the latest episodes at B Quinn Podcast. I think that's it. I look forward to having you listen to our next episode, which will be uh, in about a week or so. All right. Have a good night.